Don't forget to search for XL is Fun at Facebook and then add as friend. You also might try to do it at Twitter. Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 644. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook Excel Magic Trick 644 to 646. We got a cool video here. We're actually going to mix it up a little bit. We're going to do a recorded macro and formulas together. Now, here's the deal we have a data set. Records are in rows. Now, I have done a few other recorded macro videos where we have a bad data set and we have to do all these things to get it into a good data set like this. Now, good data set because you can sort and filter and do all pivot tables and stuff like that. But this person asked, this is at my college, it says, I have this set. I need to take Steve and Chin, combine those, put it in one cell, and then take address one and two, combine those, put them into one cell and then take Seattle, Washington, or whatever the city, state, and zip, combine those and put it into another cell. So this is a reverse. We're going from a, a smartly set up data set to a data set set up in a column without field names. All right. Uh, if we're going to do a macro, you have to make sure you have the developer ribbon. Now, I have my ribbons all squished up. The, the screen, I have it uh, restored down very small. But you do need this in 2000 and uh, seven, you'd go to the orb and then to the options. And very first thing, very first uh, category on this side, there's a checkbox over here. But I'm in 2010. You actually have to go to customize ribbon now, and go over and there's the cu a bunch of ribbons. And, and by the way, it's awesome. You can customize ribbons and add things. But then you'd have to check this. All right, and. Point number two, this video is going to require that we use this button right here. Now, by default, it is turned off. That means this is the relative uh, cell reference. When you don't see orange around it, it means the movement of your cursor during a macro or recording absolute. So if I click in A1, it records in the macro. I just clicked in A1. B4, it clicks in B4. But when you click this on, which we're going to need here, if your cell is right here and you click here, it always moves two cells below, no matter where your active cell is in the worksheet. So that's very important that we have that turned on. All right, you ready for this? Uh, third important thing for this particular macro, we need to make sure our cursor starts in the right place and ends in the right place. Not only that, but when you run it, it better be in the correct location. Now, the correct location is it needs to be in the first field of the first record that we're going to correct or fix or rearrange. So there it is. All right now, we can turn our macro on here. And another important thing I, I j failed to mention in 2007 and 10, you got to use XLSM. M is for macro. Dot XLS X will not work. In earlier versions, it didn't matter. You could record a macro. All right, I'm going to click here. I'm going to call this rearrange data or something like that. I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut. I'm going to hold the Shift key to, so it's Control and Shift F for fix. Say, in this workbook, I don't want to store it in the personal and then some description like. probably spell all those words wrong. I'm a terrible typer and speller. All right, now when I click OK, it's going to start recording. Luckily, I had I had already started in the right place. That's being recorded as the active cell. Now, when I, since I'm in relative mode, when I highlight the four rows below, it says in the macro, please highlight the four rows below, no matter where that cursor was. Right click Insert. Because remember, we need to take data, combine it, and put it vertically. Now, the first a thing. All three of these cells we're going to do here are formulas to get everything in the right place, and then we're going to pay special values. Not only that, but one of the formulas will have to decide uh, between different types of data and then add a word wrap if something happens. But our first formula is easy. We need to combine, so we click that and join ampersand shift 7, double quote space, double quote, that means a space, ampersand and last name. And what this did is it joined three things, stuff in the cell right above, a space, and stuff in the cell, one above and one to my right. Enter our next formula. Now, this one's going to be tricky. If equals if, and here's the deal. 
some of these records have nothing here and some of them have something. This room 33 has to be on in the same cell joined but on a different line. So we're actually going to, in our formula, have to decide. If there's nothing here, we just want address 1. If there is something here, we're going to have to join these two things and put a hard return between them, which is, we'll use the character function. Character 10 means hard return in a formula. So you ready? If the address 2 equals blank, double quote, then what do we want? All we want is address 1. Otherwise, what do we want? If this is not blank, we need this, ampersand, and then character 10. That is a hard return. Ampersand this. All right, so got it? Right now, it's going to, for this particular record, it'll just put this in the cell. But when it gets down to room 33, it's going to take both of these things and put a hard return in between them. All right, close parentheses. Control Enter. I actually should have hit Enter because we had one more formula to do. Now this one equals this many up and this many over. Ampersand, double quote, space, double quote, ampersand. I'm going to cheat here. I'm going to copy this in some such a bad typer. This, Control V, this. Uh, control Enter. Now, we have our three things exactly what like we need, but we can't leave those formulas there. We're going to highlight these, and there's lots of ways to copy Control C, paste special values. Um, I'm just going to do this way. How about right click the edge of the dancing ants, right click, drag away, and then drag back. That brings up a special menu, and then copy here as values only. There's a great new keyboard shortcut that I'll show you in another video. Uh, Mr. Excel showed in some of his videos for the new paste special values, but not here. All right, so we got it. We still have a few things left to do. We need to get rid of this record. So in, uh, I'm going to click, and when I right click delete, it's all done relative. So I'll always delete the current record. So I'm going to delete this. Totally important, this macro we had to consciously start in the right place and we have to consciously end in the right place because remember wherever the macro started it was it, when we started it was the first field first item first record right so that's where we started that was the active cell so we have to end there so when we run the macro next time it'll do it to the right record all right i'm going to click stop right here now our big test is um before we do our test, let's go look and see if it got recorded. Alt F8 is the keyboard shortcut for a list of macros. There it looks like it's there. We can click Options. We can see our name, our keyboard shortcut, our description. We can click Edit. Ooh, there's the Visual Basics uh, window. We can see our uh, workbook right there. We can see that a, mac a module got inserted, and there it is right there. We can look at this and see things like offset. See, it didn't record uh, select row 3, 4, 5. It says offset 1 below, and then it went down uh, four rows from there. We can see all of these. These are um, This is our selection, but look in our formulas, relative cell references. This is not A1, A2, B3 in mat and uh, recorded uh, VBA. It does row, I'm going to minus one, so I want to subtract one, which means go up. And in column, it means add one, so that means go one to the right. So you could look through this if you want. Finally, we copied, uh, paste special values, um, deleted a row, and finally, our active cell dot offset add four rows. That's when we actually clicked in our that uh, record for rows below, so when the macro started next time, it would start in the right place. All right, I'm going to close all this. Let's try it. Control-Shift-F. Woohoo! Control-Shift-F. I can't believe it's working. Look at that. Control-Shift-F. I'm going to just uh, um, do all those. We got them all done. By the way, in this workbook, there's lots of practice sheets, so when you mess up, because usually when you record macros, you mess up. But wait a second, what's going on here? Oh, let's do a couple clean house cleaning things. We we did the thousand records or whatever. I'm going to delete the rows, which I should have done in the first place. I'm going to um, 
click here, that selects everything, and then I'm going to double click that best fits all of the columns, and then double click and best fit all the rows. But wait a second, it doesn't look like our addresses, uh-oh. Looks like we have a problem here, 10, 13 Street, room 33. It, oh, that character is actually in the cell. The, the information about word wrap is in the cell. Remember when we did character 10? But we actually have to word wrap the whole uh, column. So I went to home and then right there. And now we can see, wow, it worked just fine. Here, we, jo we joined our two bits of data. Here, we joined our three. Here, it got just one, just one. But look at that. Here, it got two, that if function, you remember, and it got a hard return. All right, that's a little bit of fun with uh, recorded macros and formulas. See you next trick.